Hey everybody, it's Paul again. Um, I have another radio for y'all from Kenwood. That's actually it's the Kenwood X line. Uh, it's the DDX 5902. Uh, this, this radio averages around about 499. Has a two-year warranty because it is a Exelon uh, radio. Uh, this radio's got a 6.2 inch WBGA touchscreen. Um, let's see, it's also got LG Bluetooth that supports A2DP, Aptex, and SPPD. It also has app control for iPhone uh, Andro and Android, as well as iHeartRadio and Pandora for both those phones. Uh, it also, for compatible phones, it has HDMI and M MHL inputs. Uh, it, also has, it also supports with, with a compatible cable, and on compatible phones, uh, true mirroring. Uh, you also get uh, WMA, MP3, uh, AAC, and FLAC um, music files through the USB ports and stuff. Um, oh, let's see what else it's got. Um, it's also a Sirius XM ready. And also it's a, 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 Apio, Apio, however you say that. It all, also has uh, support for that as well. And there's actually plenty of other features, but before we get into all of them, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's on the inside, and then we'll go from there. Box open. Uh, the first thing I come to is the Bluetooth microphone. Uh, here, uh, the next thing I pull out is the uh, is the parking brake extension wire in case you need to extend it to the actual parking brake. Uh, let's see, the next thing is got um, one, two, three uh, instruction manuals with the warranty card. If you can see that, it's also got some installation screws and some CD keys, as well as uh, a little a block for the, I think the HDMI cable, so it keep, keeps that in, in, in the spot. Uh, let's see, oh, and it has a little. A special warning for cell or smartphone users. But I want to read that. You get different languages on it, and a little picture of a generic phone there. Uh, it's got here's the power wiring harness. Of course, without any 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 of that, nothing not going to work. But anyway, uh, let's see. I'm flipping the lid open here. Attached to the lid in a plastic bag is a trim ring. It has to hide the sides of the radio. Uh, let's see. I don't see anything else. We'll go ahead and slide out the radio, I think. I think, there's, I think there's nothing else in the box. Yeah, there's nothing else in the box. If you can see, they have the lid flying open. Uh, let's see here. We got some styrofoam ends to keep it nice and safe. Uh, we got nothing, no more styrofoam there. Let me go ahead and see if I can get this out of the this little baggie. Alright, here's a, well, if I can get, get it all trapped with this plastic cover here. Here is um, a cage. Uh, it comes in case in case you're doing a, an install that doesn't really have a, a doubled in size hole and you don't have a kit for it. Alright, I'm peeling off the, the screen protecting plastic piece here. It never seems to come off in one piece. Alright, and here's the radio. Let's get it uh, mounted up. I'll show you what's going on back here. We'll turn it around and we'll power it up and we'll go try to go through all the features as I find them on the Alright, we got it all turned on back here. And as usual, we'll start from this side and work my way to the side. If I get my head in the way, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the first thing I come to over here. Uh, is the USB port, a little, little three foot cable that you can plug USB so you can probably route it to like a, a pocket or, or a glove box or somewhere. And it's got a little cover on to keep the dust out when you're not using it. Uh, directly underneath have these two yellow ports. Uh, this right here is a video out of the audio and video output. This is the video. And just to let you know, this over here, this is the audio part of the audio video out. So you got the video and audio out right here. That's kind of far away. I guess they couldn't figure out how to get close together, but that's where it is. Uh, the second yellow one, this is the reverse camera input, so you can buy, you can purchase an optional camera and plug it here so when you put it in reverse, it will uh, interrupt your screen and show you what you're backing into. All right, directly underneath this is your, your antenna wire. This is what you plug your, most probably nowadays, an antenna adapter. Um... Let's see, right here, uh, this is audio video in one, and this is audio video in two slash iPod. So this, these are inputs for the radio, but you have to purchase optional cables to 
plugged in that, that, that supports audio and video. Uh, directly underneath, we got subwoofer, rear, and front five, well, we all five figure five volt pre outs. Because all Kenwood Exelon uh, doubled in screens have five volt pre outs. Uh, you can do uh, you know a base amp, a, a two channel amp, two two channel amps, four channel amp, five channel amp. You know, many configurations as usual with, with all three pre outs. And like I said, this is audio video off of the audio that uh, supports the video coming out over here. Uh, directly above this, uh, this little four pin plug and this little, what looks like an aux input, uh, this is for the iDataLink Maestro harness. Uh, you can go to um, iDataLink.com slash Maestro, that's M A E S T R O. And look at and see if your vehicle, uh, usually newer vehicles nowadays, uh, you may have a, a special harness that you can get that will link your your radio, of course, with all, and keep nearly everything working on your car now or truck, and as well as tap into your ODB two port and bring up gauges and tire some things uh, like tire pressures if you have it. So, uh, sensors and all that and a bunch of other car related information you can bring it in, into the radio using the IDentalink Maestro harness. Uh, not every car is compatible so you, you look and see if yours is or not. Usually newer ones are. Uh, over here this is the microphone import. Import. Input. Sorry for the sniffling. Uh, yeah, this is where you plug your microphone into. Uh, this is the HDMI uh, or MHL Input and that's what that little uh, piece I showed you earlier inside the. Um, let me see if I can grab it for you. Uh, this little, if you can see it, it looks like an H here. Uh, that right there goes right here. And what you do when you plug your HDMI cable in, you screw this uh, H looking harness onto here. And it'll, it'll, it'll go in behind the end of the plug and hold it in place because you know those HDMI. Cable ends are about an inch and a half long, and it might they might be uh, prone to wiggling and popping out. So this will hold it in place. Uh, directly underneath the HDMI port or MHL port, uh, the MHL is like good for multi uh, like mirroring and stuff. Uh, uh, let's see here. We got uh, this is the power port plug plug in uh, port <laughs> with a 10 amp fuse. Uh, we also have a fan over here, and right here is the port for the Sirius XM module. That's another optional module you can get along with the optional camera. Uh, these two wires right here, if you can see them, uh, one is purple with a white stripe. Uh, this is the reverse wire. Uh, what you do is you take this wire and hook it to your reverse wire that, uh, that turn, you know, when you put reverse on your car or truck. This will tell the radio when to interrupt your screen to show you the what the backup camera sees. Uh, this green wire, this is your park and brake switch. Uh, this is how you get to get to watch videos and, and access certain menu items uh, when the park and brakes uh, is um, engaged. That that way you, you know it, it, it's knowing you're being safe. Blah, 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 blah. It, when it knows you're being safe. Anyway, that's all the features. There's actually a lot of features in here on the back of the radio. Look, it looks like a lot of stuff. It looks like a back of a computer or something. Um, let me go ahead and get it turned around. We'll get it powered up, and we'll see what that hap what happens here. Right, we get it booting up here. Uh, the first first thing to do is go into an initial setup mode. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to turn off demonstration because that's going to interfere with half what I'm talking about. Uh, we got language here, so you can change your language. Uh, R cam or, or reverse camera interrupt. Uh, this you can actually turn it on so that it actually tells the, the radio when to interrupt when you're using your camera. Uh, if you don't have a camera, then you just leave it off. Uh, panel color. Uh, there's also a feature in the settings, but I'll go ahead and go through it now. You can actually select different backgrounds from here under background tab. And I kind of like the little swirly uh, different color lines there. Or you can use a user image, which you, uh, you can get from probably like from a USB uh, thumb drive or something. Uh, panel color, if I get a tap on it there. Uh, panel means the the buttons. So right now I think it's going on scan. So let's go to blue. If you see they turn blue, uh, let's see if it went yellow or 
Got an or orange is yellow. And then we got probably reddish orange or pink or whatever color you want. If you go to you know the favorite color you let you like or something. Um, let's see. Go to user. We go to edit. You can actually dial in the RGB inputs that you like. If you have like a certain RGB values, you can actually you know you know type it in here. I think you may have to. Looks like looks like from 31 to. Give me a second to see what the. Yeah, from zero to 31, yeah, on all the things. So you you can actually dial in the color that you want. It looks like I dialed in a light green color uh, we all, also on here we have dimmer which uh, if the uh, if the the light is the lighting or LED or the background is too bright you can uh, dim it down a little bit it's just like a little little bit so it won't it'll make it not as bright as not in, in the nighttime all right back to here I'm backing out again so we got the color change as our color that we're gonna play with for today uh, click finish uh, this is the top menu. We got a HDMI MHL button. We got an apps button for the Android or iPhone. Uh, we also have the telephone for phone calls. Uh, we got an all source button. Uh, HD radio, iHeart radio, Pandora, which uh, iPhone and Android works both of those, as well as the apps. And we also have setup. And before I start clicking on anything else, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the outside first. Uh, the trim ring that was that came with it, it's a nice a flat black uh, color and it's kind of smooth there's no texture to it uh, the outside is more like a piano finish um, or glossy black uh, color here we got the remote sensor up the, the red triangle is also set up as a, a reset switch so if you need to reset your radio you just push that little red triangle in hold it for a few seconds and let it out uh, here's the CD slash DVD eject button. You press it, things spit out right here. This is your CD DVD port. Uh, it's got Exelon here. Um, we got, oh, we got a hair. Uh, we got Bluetooth, HDMI, uh, uh, a, a, HDMI, MHL, Kenwood, HD Radio, Sirius XM, and the model number, which of course is DDX5902. Uh, we got the menu button here. Or if you hold it down, it turns it off. Uh, we get the AV button here, or if you are playing a DVD or some video, you can hold it down and it will actually turn on the AV outputs behind the radio to send that yellow port uh, video signals out to other screens. Uh, over here we got telephone, so if you have something hooked up to Bluetooth, you can go in here and and make, make, make it receive phone calls. You can hold it down for voice, uh, that's to control the Siri on your iPhone, tell Siri what to do. Uh, let's see down here we got the volume button of course I'm in the standby mode I believe this one's not doing anything if you hold it down we get an attenuator which is also your mute button and if you hold it down it goes into the audio settings so if I hit menu it brings you to the top menu if I hit AV it just kind of uh, of course it's in standby mode right now so let me go ahead and turn on the radio which is HD radio and uh, here's the volume button here. It goes all the way up to 35. Of course, down to zero, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, ATT, our attenuator, you saw that was there for a second, and off. Uh, we also have, uh, let's see here, we got mode, receive mode, auto, digital, or analog. What that means is that's for the HD radio. Um, if you have local stations that are, that are HD radio, it'll it'll try to connect to those first. Then if it can't find it on HD radio, it'll switch over to normal analog and, and play music that way. Um, let's see, a TIA AME is automatic music entry. You press that and it'll automatically preset all your preset settings with uh, stations that it finds one after another. So it may preset some stations you may not really want. And seek. Uh, let's see what sync here we're doing preset one preset two so apparently I'm printing I'm seeking through the presets if we hit seek again uh, it's looking for one station at a time oh, no it's kind of yeah one, one station at a time 
And if I hit it one more time, it's find the, the local local stations. Let's see, let me go ahead and go to the one that I normally use. There we go. Um, these little buttons right here, these are your presets. And I believe if you hold it down, Preset ones, yes, yeah, so it just just like if it's a button, you just press and hold it down, it'll preset your your station to whatever station you're currently on at that time. All right, I'm gonna press this, get that out of the screen. Uh, of course, on here we got the station um, information, tells you what what station you listen to. It also tells you the title of the artist. And let's see, those little arrows don't do anything. I, I guess it have if it able to do digital. Um, pictures you know from from the radio station to pop up there too but I doubt I've, I've never seen one pop up yet so it's probably going to show the big music symbol um, here we got uh, this little button here that looks like a, a full filled in screen with no screens and click on it and it kind of changes the way the screen looks which is actually pretty cool I like that right there it's more less less clutter Got the channel up button Uh, got your FM, your and your seats, AM. So I think it's FM one, FM two, FM three. So you got three FM settings, or sections of eighteen different presets you could probably have. AM and just one AM. So I actually like this setup more than the other. Cause the other one it looks kind of it's it has a lot more stuff to do, but it's a lot more stuff. But anyway, uh, let's see if we got. You know, here's the AM, FM, uh, here's the channel changing, uh, let's see, yeah, channel changing, and so these are channel changing buttons, so these right here, uh, these are probably end up being, uh, track forward, track back buttons. Uh, we also see down here, you got the menu button, uh, this little arrow that's pointing this way, I'll click it in a second, the HDMI, these are other preset buttons you can, you can use, so I'm going to click this little arrow, and... It just collapses this into nothing. So if you don't use these buttons for anything, um, then you just like probably like like quick uh, quick shortcuts. Uh, if I click menu, it brings us back to the top menu, or that's where I clicked uh, HD radio, so that's now highlighted. Uh, if I go into HDMI MHL, of course I don't have a phone hooked up. Uh, it says parking brake off. Let me see if I can. Make it come on for a second. I'm gonna do anything. And yeah, no signal. So I, because I don't have a, um, a MHL compatible phone, um, it's not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna go back to the top menu. Uh, I'm gonna click apps. Uh, you select what type of phone you have, like the device type, iPhone, uh, USB one wire, device name. I get, I get a little, 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 little. <laughs> sorry. I guess once it's plugged in, I'll see it. So it will it change? Uh, if you don't have an iPhone, you go to Android. Uh, next, uh, you select how you want the radio connect to the, the um, your phone to connect to the radio. We get HDMI, MHL plus Bluetooth, or just Bluetooth. So probably to give you most. Uh, uh, Oh, most uh, features. Just leave it, leave it selected like that. We'll hit next, and it's looking for paired devices. I don't have my phone paired to it just yet, so we'll go ahead and back out of that for now. And of course, right here under telephone, that once I have a phone connected, I'll show you that in probably a little while on the next video on how to uh, use the phone. Uh, we'll back out of that, and then we're back to the top menu. Of course, we were in uh, HD Radio, of course, iHeart, Radio, and Pandora. Those are um, apps you can download for free on your phone for Android and iPhone. Uh, All Source. Uh, we got disc, which is CD or DVD, HD Radio, of course, and iPod. Uh, USB, that's like thumb drive and stuff. Of course, we talked about HDMI and HML. Uh, Sirius XM Radio, even though there, there's a button there, if you don't have the tuner plugged into it, it won't do anything. It'll just say check tuner. 
there. We're going to go back out and go back to All Source. Uh, Pandora Hearts, of course. Ep Op 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. Opio? Epio? Um, it's just, it, it, it first loads up the app settings to make sure you get the right setup. And then, of course, Bluetooth audio for music and stuff on your phone. Menu. Now I guess we'll go to the main thing we're going to set up. This is where you can do a lot of different things and it's probably going to take the longest. I apologize for the lateness of the video and the sniffling. Uh, we've got audio, display, input, and system. Those are the different functions, uh, menus that you go into. It's starting off on audio. Of course we got fader and balance. Uh, we all know what that is. You got front, rear, left, and right. Uh, it comes with a grid. You can actually click with your finger, you know, uh, wherever you want the center to be. Uh, if you can't get exactly, uh, let's say you want it a little more to the center of that seat right there, you can just move it over with the uh, icons and uh, you can kind of fine tune it. Uh, if you if you can't get it back in the center or you, or you just want to just hit, hit one thing, just click the center button and it automatically puts it zero zero, which is in the center of the whole whole mess. Uh, the next down is equalizer. We'll go into here. You got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven band equalizer. And I think if you let's see if it'll let me do it. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty cool. You just run your finger however you want your your wave to be. Uh, it's not exactly right. So sometimes because it may not read it correctly but it is pretty cool that you can run your finger the way that you want uh, if you want to kind of fine tune it you select w whichever thing you want and actually fine tune the actual frequency or hertz that you want it starts on 62.5 hertz all the way up to 16 kilohertz which is like tweeter style hertz and this is for, for bass and stuff uh, bass extension, turn that off or on, however you like it. Uh, subwoofer level, uh, you can turn it up to 10 or down to 0. Nope. It's still going. It is still going. You can go from negative 50 to 10, so you can really dial in the exact subwoofer level of bass that you want. Uh, zero is default. I'm gonna put it back on zero. Uh, da, 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 da. we also got pops, easy, top forty, jazz, powerful. Uh, of course, you know those are already preset settings. Uh, we go down. That's it. Okay. Uh, that's all for the equalizer. You got loudness, which is off or on. As automatically on, it gives you a little bit louder. Music to it, volume offset. Go from zero to six. No, it goes. Uh, da -da -da. Man. Oh, okay. Negative fifteen to six, and zero is default. Uh, subwoofer level. Uh, it's just another way to get to it out here without having to go to the equalizer. Let's see. We go down. Bass boost. Uh, we got level one, level two, level three, and off. It's usually a little harder hit. This is where it gets interesting. You got car settings. You go into car settings. You can actually tell the radio what kind of vehicle you have or something close to it. Uh, I usually put SUV on my truck. For some reason, it makes my, my, my speaker sound better. I tried all the other ones, but for for uh, but for my truck, SUV always, for, for some reason, makes everything sound better. Uh, speaker location. You can actually tell the, the radio where the speaker is, is it on the dash, is it in the door, under the dash, or is it in the door for the front, and you got rear deck or door for the back. All that can com computes the sound to make it, you know, gives you a, a different sound quality, and, and it's, it actually works pretty pretty cool. Uh, that's in car setting. Uh, next is speaker select. Uh, this one you can actually tell the uh, the radio what size speakers you have and where they're located at. So if you have it in the front and you have let's say 
five inch speakers or five and a quarters and if you go to the rear and you got six and three quarters and the back for subwoofers so if you got 12s uh, you can adjust all that and the radio automatically adjusts the, the sound to what you're inputting so it gives you even more control on how your sound operates and down here we got X over uh, this, this gives you a graphical uh, setting situation that you can really dial in uh, different graphics and, and, and graphs and the settings and stuff to really fine tune whoops my chair is falling apart if I fall down and don't come back up <laughs> yeah, that means I fall and can't get up anyway we got, uh, we got gain, slow pass frequency, slopes and uh, and phase, which is normal, is usually normal. But if you're doing something really crazy and require the burst, then they give you the option as well. All right, we're back out of that, and that's the speaker select settings, and, uh, position. Uh, we also have all. We'll just it, this is more like a really crazy front and rear balance and the fader situation. You got front left, front right, front all or all. Uh, and if you want to, you go to adjust, and you can actually dial in the feet away a speaker is. So let's say you have the front left speaker, and it's so uh, with a measuring tape, you can dial in. Uh, let's say it's a foot and a half away. 1.5. Uh, let's say this speaker is three feet away. I'll, I'll do right there. Let's. And let's say the rear speakers back here are, you know, this far away, and the, the right rear speakers is that far away, and you can also select how much dB you want, so you can really fine tune exactly where you want the sound to come from and how you want the sound to be, how much sound you want to come out of it, and everything. You're actually inputting the distance of each speaker to you. Which is crazy, and I think you hit initialize, and it all puts that in, the information in. No, oh, never mind. Initialize resets everything. Okay, yeah, that's what it's like. I thought it hit input. So apparently, when you get it set, it, it's done. So initialize is a reset button. I don't know. I just couldn't put type in reset. But anyway, uh, that is a really cool function. If you really want to really tinker with it and dial in the perfect everything then this radio nearly has all those features uh, the next is digital sound processing select or DPS uh, by default is through or you can bypass the, the digital sound processing unit built in the radio and go straight into an external digital sound processing setup and drive equalizer that just makes it uh, easier to use and sound better while you're driving, you turn it off or on. Just leave it on. That's not going to hurt anything. And that, oops, whoops. that is all for the audio. There is a lot, a ton of features in the audio section. And this radio is not even top of the line. All right, now we are display. We got the dimmer. Uh, it has an automatic dimmer, or you turn it off or on or auto. Uh, you can go to user customize. And we were there before, showing you the, the panel colors and the background colors. We already, we already did that. OSD is uh, on-screen display clock. You can turn that on, which is always going to be there. Uh, demonstration, always always make sure it's turned off. Scroll on. I mean, it's just gonna completely scroll, scroll. You know, if, the song's too, if, the, if the song title is too long for the screen, it'll scroll across the screen and start over again after a few minutes, a few seconds. If you click once, it'll just do it once to stop, or none at all. Uh, you go down. Uh, we got media customize. Uh, this gives you an option to actually change uh, the icon button. Let's say if you use uh, USB more than the Bluetooth, and on here you use iPod. No, yeah, iPod more than uh, HDMI. So yeah, you can actually adjust. The screen to whatever you, whatever you want it to be. Uh, 
Okay, we got a screen adjustment. Uh, dim off, dim on is a, this is actually a, a dim on or dimmer a screen that we can actually uh, fine tune the amount of dimness that you want from, from using the brightness and the black features of the radio. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, we also got parking guidelines. If you have a review camera that you purchased and it doesn't have guidelines built in the camera, then you can use the radio's parking guideline. These are the lines that, that shoot on the screen when you put it in reverse. Guideline setup. See, these are the screens you can you can uh, you'll see the lines, and you can actually adjust. Uh, let me do it or not. It says I can jump. Okay. Yeah, you can actually adjust how the. It won't let me go down there. What the wrong? Anyway, these are the, the guidelines for the, the backup camera. Yeah, let's see. Guidelines. Parking assist. Um, Display it's not not there because it's nothing hooked up and parking assist positions. So it may help out when you have the idyllic metro harness. All right, that's all for the display, which that that too has a lot of features built into it. Um, the next one is input. Uh, this the only page only we have here is R cam interrupt. If you have a reverse camera installed, go ahead and hit that on so that would interrupt everything put in reverse. Uh, that's all for that feature. We we'll go to system. We got language clock, and of course clock. We got you know you either synchronize with RDS, which is a radio data system from your local radio stations, um, or you can actually you know tune in. Well, let me turn it off here. Uh, you can actually tune in uh, at your own time, and then go. And if you don't like it, just hit reset. And we're back out of here. We also got iPod set up. Uh, USB one wire. You can also tell it to be USB uh, plus the audio video input, or or just USB wire. Or if you have an HDMI and Bluetooth, uh, these are all different setups. All kinds of crazy stuff. Or just Bluetooth if you don't if you don't want to use the USB um, and hit next and does all that for you. I said I don't have an iPhone I'm hooked up. You know, why don't I have an iPhone? So I can't hook it up for nothing. Uh, app setup, um, app connection setup. You're going to enter here. Enter tells you what kind of device type and connections and that's already there. Uh, Bluetooth setup. Uh, you got your your paired device list. This actually shows you all the all the phones that are paired to it. Uh, you also change the pin code. It tells you the device name. That's going to show up on your phone a bit. Uh, the, the, the device address. Auto connect. That's if you want the radio to automatically connect to your phone when it's turned on. Uh, Bluetooth, HF, which is hands-free slash audio. Usually by default it was on front only, and a lot of customers complaining that they didn't have any bass or rear speakers playing. So you'd go into the, in the settings and turn it to all. So by default now all is automatically set. So everything plays, not just the front. Uh, auto response. If you want, to, I think the radio will automatically answer for you. Auto pairing. Off or on using USB. Um, if you want the ringtone or, or ring mode, um, you, you either use the radios or the phones. Uh, you got different different uh, ringtone changes. Got three of them there. And initialize. I think that's just uh, like I said a reset. And I think that's all for the Bluetooth setup. And going down the next road here. Uh, if you want the, the beeping noises from the buttons, you turn it off or on. It sounds pretty cool when you touch it. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, set up memory. Uh, would you like to memorize or recall the audio and video settings? That's so uh, you can memorize everything on the radio in case your battery goes dead. OEM setup. That's uh, oops. It's blocked out because I, I think it's part of the oh, I Link Maestro setup. Uh, the tail key long press. This is the tail key right here. 
You can set up this long press for voice, which is for Siri. Uh, video off or R cam. So what it does is when you press and hold the button. Uh, right now, of course, uh, the Siri would answer. If I select the R cam and hold down the button, it'll turn on the camera. Which, of course, like I said, I don't have a camera here, so. That's what that's for. Uh, audio video out. You can turn it off. We'll come back. Uh, AV1, AVN2, DVD. You know, whatever source you have playing, you can, you can tell the audio video out, which is holding down the AV button to go out to different screens. Alright, down here we got the AV long press, which is the this button here. Uh, AV out, which turns on the AV output. Uh, here or you can switch to apps if you're not using any extra screens and stuff. Um, SI, you know, off or on, the seal number for the radio, uh, touch panel adjust, if you have like fingers, big as mine, you can go into here and actually it'll tell you to you know, touch different parts of the screen to fine tune the radio for your, your fingers. And system information, uh, this tells you the different versions and you can also go to the KenwoodUSA.com website and see if they have a, a firmware update for you know either one of these fixing you know, any bugs you may have um, that's all for the system and I think I pretty much went through everything um, I can't seem to find any more features like I said there's I probably missed some features and it is I mean it's not top on radio but it has some, some serious features that really make your music uh, listening uh, sessions uh, sound the best. Alright, that was the, uh, the Kenwood DDX5902 double den screen uh, touch screen radio, DVD player, CD player. Like I said it was about, about 4 dollars with a 2 year warranty. Has a lot of ton of features, on, especially on audio. If you really like to you know, tune in that perfect setting and has those features for you. Anyway, uh, Make a comment down below, hit thumbs up, like. I um, appreciate you watching. This is, this is Paul. I hope you have an awesome day, and please subscribe.